The next category is immunomodulators. And those have probably been touted as the most important steroid sparing strategy from 1980 until 1998, and specifically mercaptopurine and azathioprine. And they still remain a very important part of practice, although in Crohn's disease, the data does not support its role very much in, in uh, Crohn's because it hasn't really been shown to change the natural history as much as we may have thought it did. Uh, and it, as a monotherapy, meaning the absence of combining it with something else, it has, um, I think it's losing momentum in most parts of North America, uh, but in Europe, uh, for cost reasons, it's ac actually a lot less expensive than the biologic-based strategy. So based on your healthcare system, the step-up approach of using anti-inflammatory, that doesn't work, going to immunomodulator, that doesn't work, then you go to biologic, is often driven by cost um, because clearly the biologics are more expensive than the immunomodulators that have been around for a long time. However, the safety concern of immunomodulators, particularly in um, people above the age of 60, 65, there's been an increased risk of lymphoma. And in under 25, uh, especially males, by the way, on both sides of those age spectrums with these thiopurines, which is 6MP or azathioprine, there's an increased risk of lymphoma. One that's of particular concern to the younger age group is something called hepatosplenic T-cell lymphoma, which is universally fatal. And um, that was initially found when thiopurines were combined with anti-TNF therapy, and everyone thought it was the TNFs. And there's a big black box warning around all of the anti-TNFs talking about this lymphoma. But to be truthful, we dug a little deeper, especially in children, because that was where the, the first six cases were really thought to be pediatric only. But now there's more than six cases, actually. And um, most of them are not pediatric onset. They're younger, but it could be anybody that an adult or a pediatric gastroenterologist would treat. And when we dug a little deeper, we realized that the risk of malignancy, particularly in children, was tied to the combination of thiopurines plus TNF or thiopurines alone, not anti-TNF alone. So we have a difficult job when we're managing young adults or young adolescents, especially males, where there's a big black box warning that talks about particularly young adolescent males. We're, we dissected that and we try and work on the idea that that is because of the combination and not anti-TNF alone. Um, and that was sort of the revolution to me about how important biologics became because we started to see some risk factors with thiopurines, not only with TNF, but alone. Methotrexate, just as, as an aside, is also an immuno, considered sort of an immunomodulator and um, that sort of gained a lot of popularity after the, these lymphomas started to pop up related to thiopurines and people were using methotrexate instead, again, often in combination with an anti-TNF. The whole reason for the combination appears to be tied to the fact that biologics, particularly anti-TNFs, uh, can be cleared quickly through the body. So it's based on their pharmacokinetics. And these two drugs, methotrexate and thiopurines, could actually help increase the drug level or drug concentration to help keep the TNF working longer and more durable. So they are companion, but uh, there's new strategies to do that with the anti-TNFs where you don't need the second drugs.